All right, so in finishing this up, this meets all the requirements of the emoji exercise. What are the requirements? It is supposed to be a full emoji. Doesn't mean it needs to be super complicated. And basically, to be able to recreate something that we made in, in this simple emoji maker flat icons program, even something as simple as this, but very importantly, to fully make it just with shape layers, right? To not rely on any raster elements. So if you don't feel like your emoji is fully finished enough, you just want to finish it enough so it is an expression or it is something that's a full symbol. Maybe you just need a few more elements. But that's all. That's the only requirement. And we start with just simple flat shapes like cutouts of paper, like what I've done here. Now, just like we had in the first exercise, if you want to take it further, I give you these finishing extras. And we can use these to change it from just being flat to having textures, lighting, just different effects. And we're going to keep them as vectors. But these are what are called layer styles. So when we wanted to change the color of an emoji, or of a, not an emoji, of a shape vector layer, we would double click on the layer icon, right? So if I wanted to change this guy's skin color, I could pretty easily. Or I can always go back to the original. If I double click on the layer itself, not on the name, not on the icon, not on the eyeball, but just on the layer itself, it will open up the layer styles for that layer. And layer styles work incredibly well on vectors because they'll be perfectly clean. So there are a lot of layer style options. And you'll see I don't know why I actually have so many here. <laughs> Sometimes they might be redundant. And if they are, you can drag the redundant ones to this trash. Because we really just want one of each to show. So these are the standards. Bevel and emboss, stroke, inner shadow, inner glow, satin, color overlay, gradient overlay, pattern overlay, outer glow, and drop shadow. So I'm going to start with color overlay because it's the one we're not going to use. <laughs> Color overlay simply changes every pixel in that layer or in that vector shape to a new color. And you can set what that color is. And you can set the opacity of it. So now it's blending 44% black on top of my yellow. And when I say OK, you'll see that layered up underneath in, in the layer with this little drop-down menu of effects. And this you can do in Photo P as well. So you can turn them on and off, or you can alter them. And just to turn them off as individual effects, you just uncheck them. The one that is helpful is gradient overlay. So if I want to give some dimension to this head, I can choose a gradient. And we're going to be using this more later. But let's just use a basic gradient. White to black. But the gradient, I can scale in different ways. I can angle it in different ways. So if I want it to look like there's a shadow kind of underneath the head at a slight angle, I can scale it like that. And then I can take the opacity down. And then I can actually go, instead of normal mode, I can make the gradient something else, like a pin light or a soft light. I can experiment and get these subtle shifts. Like overlay mode will be the most subtle, but it will be lower opacity or a lower saturation here, higher saturation here. Multiply or color burn will be the most extreme. And I can change the colors as well. So instead of going black to white, I can go from a, an orangish darker yellow like that, and I can take the highlight, actually I'll leave the highlight white, that's always a nice highlight, and then play with the scaling of it, and I can set it on normal mode, 
at different opacities. So that will be nice and subtle. The problem is I have this chest piece sitting in front. So if I want to move that back, I simply move it down. Grab it, move it underneath my head shape, right? And now that one, I might want, want to do a similar effect, a similar gradient, and then maybe I'll make that a little bit more opaque. Less scaled, more scaled. Can play with these things. Or I can have it look like a t-shirt by also adding a color overlay like a white t-shirt. With a little bit of shading in there. Okay, if I have a collar, I'm going to have a drop shadow behind it or a shirt. So I can put an effect on this and we're going to use drop shadow this time. And drop shadow, again, you just kind of play with these. You can play with the distance, the spread, the angle. So it kind of fits your, your desire. The color. The opacity. Even the noise, if you want to have it not look so clean. And then if I want to copy that to the other one, what I can do is right-click and say copy layer style and then I can right click on my other layer and say paste layer style and it will match that so that time it did it on the collar I'll do that again here paste layer style so now that drop shadow is going to be everywhere the same paste layer style Someone talked about textures and patterns. So maybe for the brim of the hat, I can do what's called a pattern overlay. And just like the custom shapes, you can load your own. I actually really like these that I've loaded in. They're called anti-gradient patterns. But a nice basic one is grass, or, or actually water is the most basic. You can just use this as kind of a dappled pattern. And then you scale it. And then you play with the blending mode. So I don't necessarily want the blue color. But I might want a different impact. Like just the luminosity. Then I can play with its opacity. Just make that subtle. Make it really, really thin. So you can see that the texture is now there. And then one of my favorites for vectors is I can add a stroke, which is an outline around the brim of the hat. And I can choose the color of the stroke. Let's make it dark. I can make it thicker. This is like an outline. So let's make it a dark brown. Or let's just match what's there. Right? And then I want it really thick, but I don't want it to be on the outside. I want it to be on the inside of the shape. So all of this can be done, and because they're on vector layers, they will all all these effects will be perfectly clean at any scale. And again, you can turn them on and off. On and off. And I can do things like a gradient overlay on this, but this time I want to multiply it, make it darker, change the angle, to really highlight those eyes. All right, what other things can I do? Maybe I want to put that drop shadow on the eyeballs. So I can paste that, that old layer style of the drop shadow, but maybe change it a little bit. So this time I'll change it to be multiply, so it darkens anything behind it. And I'll change the angle. I'll change the size, the opacity. And maybe give it a little bit of noise. See what that does. 
And then if I like that, I can copy that layer style and then paste it onto some of these others. And try it on the cheeks. So very quickly, we're building more subtlety and more kind of finish to these just using the effects. And you can always turn them on and off. I can use satin, which is kind of an interesting lighting effect across the shape that kind of waves, highlights, and shadows. And you can play with it and soften it in different ways. I'm going to try pin light for this. Maybe soft light. So that shirt looks like it has something to it. I can copy that, put it onto the other lapel. And again, you want to be willing to fail. Just try these things out. What other, it's going to depend on what yours is, what other kind of layer styles you want to play with. What I'm not doing is adding a whole lot of detail. I'm just playing with the effects. So if I do a subtle gradient overlay here, I'm going to do, let's see, screen. I'm going to use a basic gradient. And play with its opacity. And maybe flip its angle, reverse it. It doesn't take a lot. And then maybe give that kind of gradient. Say OK. Copy that and then put it onto my whole group for the cowboy hat. So I don't put the effect on an individual layer. I can try putting it on the group, see if that works. And it does but I'm going to flip it and then multiply it. So it's a little bit darker. And you can always turn them off. Maybe play with the scale of that a little bit. Instead of multiply, let's try overlay. And then play with the scale. Eh. Yeah, I think that works best. All right. So I think that's going to do it for mine. And again, I'm just going to save it the same ways. File, save, it will update my PSD, my working file format right here. And then I want to say file, save a copy to the desktop as a PNG. If you don't have PNG as an option, you want to check that it says RGB mode at the top. And if you need to change it, you can change it under image mode. You want it to be RGB and not limited in any way. And then I have my PNG now with all those effects, right? And now if I wanted to, I can upload my extras to Canvas. So I just edit it. And I'll say next with extras. So I have my flat shapes and now I have my one with some textures. And you can play a lot longer with it, but some students really enjoy this exercise and make it part of their portfolio by the end. But it always takes a little bit of, of work and more time than we just take on an exercise. But you can see the different kind of presence it might have, mostly with just drop shadows and gradations.